G'day guys, Andy Thomas here from Wolf on the Run. Um, in the last video we made a sat nav stroke phone holder for the bike, for the, um, the, the center bar on the front part of the bike, but um, I've been looking into the Africa Twins regarding this and there's been a lot of issues where the front rails holding the windscreen are breaking, uh, breaking the welds with the extra weight of these. So Camel, uh, Camel Adventure in America have come up with this new bar that actually fits and braces your windscreen bar and then you fit this item onto the bar. I'll, um, I'll put a picture up just here so you can see it. Um, this is like the, the design by Camel. Um, so yeah, they're in America only at the moment. I've just looked online to see if they're here in Australia, but they're not. Uh, they're 99 American dollars, which is about 165 Aussie dollars. And then obviously shipping them here, you're probably up to nearly $200 uh, for this bar. So, for $14.30, I bought a piece of tube, a couple of nuts, three quarter nuts, a few nuts and bolts, and we're going to make one. Alright guys, I've done a bit of sketching on rough measurements that we want. Um, I must say that we're not actually copying um, Camel's ad Adventure um, bars. We're going to be doing our own design. It's going to be very, very similar, but due to copyrights and all that, I am not going to copy it. I'm going to do my own version similar. Um, so right, I've took some measurements. I'll get the tube and the bender and we'll get started. Alright guys, so to start off, I'm going to find the centre of the tube, which is 900mm long, so 450 Alright guys, this is a um, English pipe bender, um, this is 15mm, this guide that goes on top of there to roll it round is 15mm and this pipe is 16, so I can just about get it in there, but I can't get the former on top and make it work. So I'm gonna try and make it work with just the roller. So let's have a go. No. All right guys, I'm gonna cut the pipe into pieces. Um, to the measurements that I need to create the shape. Um, I've just tried to bend it and because it's quite thin it's just completely snapped on me. Um, so I am going to cut it, miter it and then I'll weld all the pieces together. Alright guys, so I, I've cut all my pieces, cut them to the angles that uh, I think I need. I'm just going to dress them up on here to make sure they're nice and flat for joining together at the angle. Uh, so I can weld them up. Alright guys, <clears throat> this is just a little bit of double sided tape and this is my theory. So I'm going to stick this down like so. And then basically piece it all together and all the tape will hold it nice and flat for me and level and mitres wrong piece and my piece missing, where's it gone? it is So this piece is a little bit longer, but I'm going to check all my measurements on my angles, make sure I'm exactly as I should be. These are going to get docked afterwards once I've um, got my final measurements. Alright, let's get to just roughly get some ideas. Looks a bit odd there on the camera, but it's pretty pretty close as I say these are a little bit different in length that one was just a break off so these have got to get cut in a moment anyway 
So, yep, yeah, I'll start welding that together. Alright guys, so I've tacked that together. I'm not going to show you my pigeon welding. This pipe is really thin, I'm a welder done if I can turn it down low enough. Really, it needs a bit of gas welding or uh, T, not MIG. Um, but yeah, it's holding together for now. So we'll, um, we'll let that cool down and we'll try it before we fully weld it. Okay guys, that's that bit welded up. All I can say is I'm glad I'm better than linishing than I am at welding thin material. Um, the welder, as I say, it's a little bit too powerful for this bar. It's only a light gauge bar. But uh, yeah, it's done the job. It's pretty strong. Um, so now we're going to go on to this back part where these come in and work off from there. Alright guys, I didn't show you none of the welding because I, I spent more time sort of plumbing trying to spot it together and filling in little holes because it was blowing pretty bad. Um, but we're just going to linish all this up now with a flappy disc. Um, and then get it ready for this plate that we're going to put on here. Alright guys, there we are, that's stage one complete. Um, I'll show you that on the bike shortly. I've got to cut a plate for across here for the bolting underneath. Um, but uh, I'm going to linish it all up, take all the zinc off it, um, zinc coating. Um, so I'm going to paint it black, so I'll key it all up, give it a good keying in. Um, any little imperfections in the corners, I will fill, spray filler and then sand it. Um, and then we're going to paint it black anyway. Alright. Alright guys, so we cut that bit of flat. Uh, next thing we're going to do is measure where the holes are on the bike so that we can uh, line them up. Let's go. Alright guys, so I've got the torch shining down under there. This is You can just about see the holes that I'm talking about. One there and one there. So I'm going to try and measure those um, to see what the centres are. It's going to be awkward to get in and I'm also trying to film it for you guys to see. Um, see if we can get a measurement of centre. I reckon we're at about 37 millimeters. Can you just see that? 37 millimeters. 37, 38 perhaps. I'll make the holes a little bit bigger so we've got a bit of play anyway. Alright, let's go cut and drill the plate. Alright, as you see, that's got to go on there like so. Um, and also we've got to get the 38 millimeter between those. I've got to cut these down and get the angle correct somehow. Um, we could tack that and grind it to make it work. But first off, we'll do these 38 millimeter holes. Not 38 millimeter holes. We'll do the holes 38 millimeters apart. All right. I'll put a bit of masking tape over it so I can mark it easier. All right. It's 90 mil, so that's 45 to center. Half of 38 is 19, for all those that went to school, 19 and 38, and 1938, no, was not my birth year before you all comment, I know I look old enough, but, and again, you know me, just a bit of builder's eye, just to get the centre. All right, I'll drill them out with a three mil pilot again, and then we'll go through with a say probably a seven or an eight mil. It's um, six mil bolts that we're using, and it's a six mil hole in there, I believe. Let's go check it. There you go. That's a better shot for you. This is going to be really fiddly when it comes to putting these in. But this is a 6mm bolt. So if that goes through, yeah. Yeah, that's plenty. So we'll do a, we'll do an 8mm. Um, so we've got a bit of play just in case we're off. Alright guys, I decided to go with a 7.5 as you can see. That's going to give me a fair bit of play anyway. So I shouldn't be that far out. All right, drilled. I'll clean that up. That's a great shot through the windscreen. 
<laughs> um, so now I'm going to just play with this for the moment. Um, that's the theory, it's going to go like that there. So I've just got to do a little bit of messing around under there. Let me just put the lights on. So as I say, that's the theory is it's going to sit about there. So it's around my cluster. And then I've got to make this fit down here. So I'll do a little bit, it's pretty much straight. Um, yeah, let's do some grinding and work it out. Alright guys, let me just zoom you out so you can see what I'm thinking. Um, obviously I've got to get this pitch right as I tack it onto there. And looking at it, I think I was pretty, pretty straight. So I'm going to go for that as is there. So I'll grind that flat. from there all right I'm going to sit that on top of there and I'm going to give it a couple of tacks I might clean it up first give it a couple of tacks and see if that'll work Well guys, I've just tried that and I am absolutely stoked. It's pretty, pretty bang on. So I'm going to weld that up. Alright guys, it looks like I've caught a galah, which is one of these birds here. And I've grabbed it and I've squeezed it and then whatever's come out of its backside, I've just put it around there. It only had a quick look. I'm not showing it, mate. That is the shittest welding I've ever done. It looks like, as I say, I've squeezed the shit out of a galah. But you know what? It's going to hold. I'm good at linishing. I'm good at filing, so that should come up okay. Ta-da! Like new. What I'm going to do, guys, I'm going to put some paint on this now. Um, I'm going to put plenty and plenty of paint on. Um, see if I've got some primer, and then I can build it all up. And... Um, I can sand the primer down and then put the coat on just to fill a little bit of imperfections. Alright guys, as you can see look, I put plenty of paint on, it's got to dry and then I'll sand it down. I couldn't find no primer, so that'll fill all the holes and imperfections and it should look okay later on. Alright, so this next bit is the tricky bit and the awkward bit. I'm going to try and take a bit of weight out of these, it's the only thing I could think of that was going to work as the clamping system. Um, so yeah, my theory is to grind these down, cut them in half, and then put some bolts through. So the bolt as a clamp, one half will get fixed to the frame, the other one will go underneath, and then the bolts, bolts will hold it together. Alright, we'll have a go, see if that works. So first off, I'm going to try and cut a notch into there, so that the head of the bolt will sit on that, and the nut of the bolt will sit that side. That's my theory. Alright guys, so that's that's what I'm trying to do. That's bloody hot as well. That's what I'm trying to do so that I can get drill a hole through there and through there and then we'll cut it in half that way afterwards so the bolt will go through and then all, the nut will also lock onto that side. And we can round these over later on once I've got this flat and we can drill it and then we'll go from there. Alright guys, so that's that's my plan, that's my theory. Um, I can drill through there, 
out there, put the nut on one side and the bolt through the other, cut it in half and that will be a clamping system for around that bar um, on the existing parts of the Africa Twin Frame. Alright, we'll carry on with that, I've done the both of them, um, yeah, we'll carry on with that now and drill through and go from there. Alright guys, for all you guys who are going to come and say, yeah, you should be using oil, I was, I just started off with a pilot drill, I was using oil to go through, um, I've gone all the way through now, with a 4mm drill bit, um, so this should take my screw that I'm proposing, like so, as I say, we're going to cut them in half that way, once I've done all the prepping, I'll, I'll cut, leave them till last for cutting in half, I'll make sure it's all done and ready first. Alright guys, so I finished linishing those up, that's how they've come out, as I say we are going to paint them. Um, I'm going to cut them in half now, um, so they become the clamps that we spoke about. There we go, so that's the clamp idea. I'll do the other one. Alright guys, so I'm going to try and get these bolts into here and according to the, the video I watched I've got to take out the, the rubber seals for the lights. Um, I'm not going to go through it all with you, you can go on the, I'll put the link on below of Camel how they put, install theirs um, rather than me go through everything with you on here. Yeah, just watch that one. Alright guys, so there I've tacked those on, I've put them in position tack them on where they've got to be for the clamp on the top of the bar and now I'm going to weld them all up and do a bit of finishing and come back to you. I'm absolutely hammering the primer on. I know it's going to bubble, run, blister, but this is just to take any indiscrepancies out. As you can see, it's already brought my welds together pretty good. I, you know, I'm not the best welder in the world. Each to their own. Before everybody has a go at me and saying, "Oh, how shit your welding is." Um, I'm a builder. Um, Qualified carpenter, bricklayer, plasterer, so yeah, each to their own trade. Um, this is my hobby. I enjoy doing things like this because it's completely different from what I do day to day. So yeah, as I say, you guys who are engineers and fabricator welders, boiler makers, um, I admire what you do and everybody's got their own trade and skill. So yeah, good on you. Um, so yeah, this what I do is I just put loads and loads and loads of paint on and then just sand it all back once it's all gone really hard. Basically, yeah, I mean I could take it down the road and get it powder coated, it cost me about $25, $30, perhaps $40, I'd still be in bonus. Um, but the theory behind it is, nah, it's something to do for me, as you can see, look, all the paint's actually all dripping off, but it puts a good coat, thick coating on it, and then I'll sand it all back, and then we'll do a another fine coat of primer and then we'll go on to the black all right guys so <clears throat> i'm just wet and drying down the paint now just to get up because as i say i put plenty of paint on so i'm just getting out all the um, bubbles and runs and creases i'll give another couple of light coats of um, primer not as much this time um, the idea behind the piling all the paint on was to um, 
just get it covered and a bit of protection. Take out the indiscrepancies of um, any of my welding and stuff. Right, so I'll dry that off and I'll give it a bit more paint. Alright guys, so there we go. I've uh, sprayed it up. I've put a, a fair few coats of paint on there. Um, and you can see now that it looks more or less... What are you dogs? It looks more or less like it's uh, powder coated. Jasper, Jasper, quiet! It looks more or less like it's been powder coated because I've put that much paint on. Um, I've had a fair few coats. I rubbed all the grey down, did a couple more coats of grey and I've put about six coats of black on top of that. And let me zoom you right into it so you can see that it's sort of, yeah, you can see it's coated really well. It's still a little bit wet, but as you can see that's uh, more like a powder coating now, the amount of paint on that. So I'm going to let that dry. Um, and then we'll install it on the bike. Okay guys, I cut it short regarding the installation because um, it was just taking too long, really fiddly to get those bolts in down the bottom there and uh, to get them in. I didn't want to take the windscreen off so those bolts to the other side as well was a bit awkward to get to. But uh, yes, she's in. I'm going to mount the, um, the phone mount on there now and um, See how it goes, try it out. But that's it mate, that's, um, that's it installed. Um, yeah, let's get this mount on. There we go guys. Phone mount, GPS mount, all installed. Onto the bracket, you can see the back of there. Our frame mount that we've made, fixed down the bottom. And it brings that absolutely perfect into my vision there. When I'm riding, I can still see my cluster down below. So that's absolutely perfect. I'm going to sit up on the bike just to get the height view. And that's level in my eyes now, so I can still see over the windscreen. Um, perfect, absolutely perfect. Loving it. That looks really, really good from here. Really pleased. Alright guys, there you go, absolutely fantastic, I'm over the moon with this design, um, absolutely fantastic, it works a treat, um, the box, the uh, GPS box that we did the other day, uh, and now the mount, it's absolutely fantastic, um, Camel Adventure um, of America, it's a very, very similar design to what they've bought out, um, as I say again, I have not copied it due to copyrights, um, it's a similar system that I've made. I've, as you've seen, guys, I made it here on my own bench. I'm not going into to making them for a living. It's just for myself. Um, and I will promote Camel down below. Um, go onto their link. They've I've just been onto their website and they've just told me that um, they've run out of stock. They've been inundated with these um, and they, they, they've got none left. They've sold out completely. Um, so they're making more. They're getting more in. And for the guys that have just bought the 2018 bike, they're going to make one for that bike as well. They bought their price down from $99 to $79. And they're due back in their store, their um, online shop, um, on the 1st of April. <laughs> you know what they say about the 1st of April, might be a bit of a fool, but yeah. No, they've said 1st of April, they'll have them all back on the shop floor and they're, they're selling them again. They're just, as I say, inundated, inundated. They've sold out completely. But there you go guys, if you want to have a go yourself, you're welcome to. Um, it's bloody hard work, I mean, I've probably put six or seven hours into this, but trimmed it down over the video. A lot of messing around with the installation and working out measurements and sizes. Um, it's, uh, if, I had, if I'd done it again, I wouldn't do it because it's just too much involved. Um, but yeah, I had fun and it works. Thanks for watching guys, fantastic.